Good evening. We especially welcome all visitors who are uh, with us today for Christmas. We are happy you are here. May you feel welcome and at home here at St. Mark's. Our celebrant this evening is Father Corey. Please stand.
guiding us year by year as we wait and hope for our redemption. Grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like a dawn, and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal, a royal dedem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel, Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out every wish. From this man's descendant, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab, Aminadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Solomon, Solomon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David, the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rebo Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah, Abijah the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, Joram the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Ahaz. Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh the father of Amos. Amos the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim, Achim the father of Eliud, Eliud the father of Eleazar, Eleazar became the father of Mathan, Mathan the, the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. 
Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Pretty much every year, I leave my Christmas shopping and card sending until the last minute. This year was not the year that I got ahead of that year. Maybe one year I'll get it all done earlier. Maybe you can relate. But you don't want to do your shopping too early, or you might get in trouble. Let me explain with the story. There was once a guard in a jail who was in a particularly good mood just before Christmas, and asked one of the men in the jail what he was in for. The guy said, doing my Christmas shopping too early. That's not a crime, replied the guard, and asked, just how early were you doing the shopping? The man paused for a second, and then told the guard, before the shop opened. <laughs> Most of us would like to do what we can to bring a little joy to friends and family during Christmas time. One way we do this is to get them gifts hopefully gifts obtained during regular store hours. And while these gifts are sure to bring a little joy to our friends and family, it's always important around this time of year to remember where our true joy, our lasting joy, in this life and in the life to come, is going to come from. Where do we find true joy? God is our joy. Let that sink in for just a moment. God is our joy. One of the Psalms proclaims this truth as the singer of the psalm says, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. It's an expression of finding joy in the Lord. When we think of all that the Lord has done for us, especially in giving us our Savior, Jesus Christ, we realize that God is our deepest, truest joy in this life and in the life to come. Not only this, but we also bring God joy. We bring God joy. We read in Isaiah, As a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. It's so important to hold these two realities together. God is my joy, and he actually likes me. Not only likes me, but reveals a love for me that is hard to understand. He entered this world as a little baby, which we remember in a special way during Christmas. He suffered the trials and temptations of this life, though without sinning. And he died to save me, personally, me, from sin and death. Why? So that I could be with him forever in heaven. Be with him who is my joy. If you remember nothing else from this homily, focus for just a second, so that if anyone asks you, what did the priest talk about during Mass? You can say that God is our joy, and that God rejoices in us, his people. And if they ask you, well, did he say anything else? You can say, 
Oh yeah, he told us not to rob any stores this Christmas. <laughs> During the Christmas Masses, it's appropriate to kneel at the part where we say, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate. So as we pray the creed together, we'll all kneel at that moment. If you can kneel, you don't feel, don't feel obliged to kneel if you're not able to kneel. Uh, but we'll all kneel for a moment. So as we begin the creed, uh, please stand and you can put the kneelers down to get ready for that moment. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and he came in. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn now in prayer to our Heavenly Father, trusting that He is real and that He hears us as we pray. For the Church of God, let Christ be born anew in our hearts and lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of the world, especially those who need food, shelter, clothing, vaccines, and education, that generous hands reach out to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let those alone this Christmas be consoled and strengthened by caring and loving family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the people of Bethlehem, that Christ's presence remain with them always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our hearts, our families, our land, and the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially the seriously ill in our parish, Tom Quendinger, Charlie Cook, Damian Bautista, Rose Corpus, Alma Broderick, Sergio Pineda, Alex Yu, Kate O'Brien Hansen, Bradley Wolf, Esteban de la Cruz, Thea Aranza de la Cruz, Oscar Arriba Ruiz, Joyce Bautista, Marta Avinia, those affected by the pandemic, and all those named on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially the recently deceased in our parish, Mary Andrich, Prasakas Valdez, Vincent Schulte, Andres Quiroz, Jose Soto, and all those named on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of George Bush Hauser, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, incline your ear to our prayers, and hear these prayers and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Robert our Bishop, John and Ramon as auxiliary bishops, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. to accept 
the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, O Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, open your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Administer, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life. Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
moment in silent prayer to remain seated or kneeling and to know that God is with you. We don't have enough opportunities in our world to just be still and to know that God is with us. So just take a moment in the silence to be in His presence.